G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this week's video, I thought I'd show you what it's like to run a fish room that has over 30 tanks running in it. I thought I'd show you the general maintenance of the fish room, how I clean all the tanks, how I do water changes, and how do I prepare fish for customers. I've got a few customers coming around this weekend and I've got to bag them up and give them to those customers. I'll show you how I go about doing that as well. Anyway, there's quite a bit to do, so let's get straight into it with this week's video. So guys, one of the first things I normally do when I'm about to do water changes in the fish room is clean the algae off the glass. And one of the best ways you can do that is to use an old credit card. Some of you guys have been on my channel for a while now, you know I used to have a marine aquarium and a credit card is one way I used to clean the algae off the glass. Marine algae is quite tough, coralline algae, and you can use a razor blade to scrape it off glass. However, you can obviously scratch your tanks if you use a razor blade and you're a little bit too rough with it. Credit card is a far more safer option. So do yourself a favor, don't throw out your used credit cards, keep them for cleaning your tanks. I don't use, like to use sponges in the, on the tanks or uh, magnet algae cleaners because if you get too close to the sand, you can get sand caught in the algae cleaner and that will scratch your glass and you'll forever have scratches on your tanks with algae growing in them and it'll look unsightly. Use a credit card instead, you won't get any scratches on your glass and you will be able to clean all the algae off your tanks in no time. Algae in, a, in freshwater aquariums isn't as hard as coralline algae, believe me, and uh, having one of these will really help you out. The other thing I suggest you get is one of these. So you can buy these from many aquarium stores or off eBay and it just basically is an extension of your arm to clean algae off tanks. Now this does come with uh, basically a filter mat a, a scourer to clean algae, so uh, it's one of those sponge algae cleaners. And again, I don't recommend using that to clean the tank because you're going to get really close to the gravel, get gravel caught in the sponge and then scratch your glass. So what I do is I pop in my used credit card into this and then I can scrape the algae off the tank without even really having to put my hands in the aquarium. Anyway, so I'm going to do some of that now and show you how easy it is to do with this device. And then uh, we're going to do some water changes. This is one of the reasons why I do like to have some algae in the aquarium. These guys are Judochromus regani. You can see there's a lot of fry in this tank and they're feeding off the algae off the side of the glass. So it is great to have algae in your tanks. Don't think it's a bad thing having some algae growth in your tanks because it can be beneficial for your fish. There's microorganisms that are in that algae and the algae itself is playing a beneficial role for those cichlids. Even though these guys are mainly carnivorous, they are omnivores, so they do eat vegetable matter. In fact, the pellet food I give them is the algae max, which is generally for herbivores, but they absolutely love it, and it is very, very good for them. Again, you can see them picking off the algae on the side of the glass. I am about to scrape it off because it, it doesn't look fantastic. Rather than having a clean, sterile tank, I believe it's best that you do leave some algae in there for them to pick off during the day for them to eat. Basically, you just put the credit card in the aquarium and you can scrape off the algae like this. Now, I can't get too far in the aquarium without taking all the lids off or standing on my ladder, my two-step ladder. So I'm gonna use the attachment and I'll show you how easy it is with that attachment. The attachment's in, and there we go. I can go right to the back of the tank without having to strain my arm or stand on a ladder or whatever. It's just, it becomes an extension of your arm and it's so easy to do. As I said, you can buy these from most aquarium stores or on eBay, they're pretty cheap. They come in packs. This isn't a really high quality one because of the, it's made of plastic. Uh, be better if you can get a stainless one of stainless steel so it doesn't bend and flex as much as this one but you get the idea so i'm just going to continue doing this on all the tanks and we'll have a look at how they are once all the water clears up so i started cleaning some of the aquariums and then i'm like well i may as well move some bristle nose into these because these fry tanks they do require a bit of cleaning and obviously with having to get up there with a ladder it's a lot harder to, to do than uh, the tanks on the middle rack. And considering these fish are so small, I thought I could put some bristlenose in with them and let the bristlenose do the cleaning for me. Uh, that will play two roles. One, the glass will be clean, 
and the bristle nose will be able to grow out a little bit better in this system than in the individual tanks behind me. So there's a bit of a process to get these tanks ready for bristle nose. Because these tanks are plumbed, bristle nose love plumbing <laughs> and uh, fitting into little tight gaps. So I will have to block out the inlets, so the return plumbing on these tanks, because the bristle nose will flow upstream into the plumbing and into the sump. I've had it happen before, and I'm not gonna let that happen again. So these are the elbows that return water to the tank. I'm just gonna put some fly screen with a zip tie around it uh, to prevent the bristle nose from going into the plumbing. So here's the return line. Uh, this is the 90 degree elbow that feeds water back into the aquarium. One of the benefits of having these return lines uh, detachable from your plumbing is, is that obviously you can do maintenance on these elbows. You can clean them if you need to, uh, and you can direct water flow in the aquarium as you need. Uh, not that you're gonna be doing that much anyway. Um, I kind of direct them into the aquarium on an angle, uh, so the middle of the tank is getting as much flow as possible. Also, you can notice that these are black PVC that this is black PVC, but that's not entirely true. This is actually a paint that you can purchase by a company called Krylon. It's a special paint that adheres to plastics without any needing for sanding or priming of the plastic beforehand. It adheres to the plastic straight away and is non-toxic. So it's perfect for fish. Uh, it's been a year since they've been in the aquarium and you can see uh, there is some discoloration on the paint, but that is not the paint uh, wearing away and exposing PVC, that's purely mineralization from the water. The water for African cichlids is hard and alkaline, and that's calcium uh, buildup and on, on, the, on the actual PVC, on the actual paint. So um, I could clean that off if I wanted to, and it will go black again. But I'm not gonna bother doing that. That's not what this video is about today. What we're gonna do now is make this. So you can see this is a 90 degree elbow I have already prepared earlier. And we've got some fly screen on the front with a cable zip tie. It's a little bit hard to see because everything's black, but that is the whole point. I don't want to see the plumbing in the aquarium. And that's why I've spray painted these black and use black parts to do this. Looks a lot, a lot neater. So I'm just going to show you how to put the fly screen on this. It's not hard. It's obviously not very difficult. All you need is some fly screen. Obviously fly screen that's not treated with any fire retardant products. You need to cut the fly screen into a nice square sized portion to fit over the hole, obviously. And I'm just gonna fold them over the inlet. Okay, so like that. So we've got all the fly screen clamped down now and we're going to tighten the cable tie over the fly screen. You just have to do it hand tight. It doesn't need to be super, super tight because I want to ha have the ability to take this fly screen off if I need to. I also put the locking mechanism at the top of the inlet so it's not in the water, just as a thing for neatness in the aquarium. And now you can see we've got this beautiful frill of fly screen around the entire edge. So what we're gonna do now is just cut that off, trim that back so it looks a lot neater. That's all gone. And now we're just gonna trim the top of this off. And we're done. So now we've got two elbows done, ready to go on the tanks. Bristlenose catfish obviously won't be able to go into these. Now, I could put bristlenose catfish in these aquariums and they will clean this algae off for within about 24 hours. However, the fish in these tanks are quite aggressive and the bristlenose catfish I have growing up at the moment are a little bit too small to put into these aquariums. So I fear that they would get killed in here. You've got a breeding pair of Judochromus regani with their fry protecting their fry vigorously from the fish they can see on the other sides of the aquarium. Uh, Neolamprologus brevis sunspot, they've got fry. There's a trio of adults in that tank. And then lastly, this tank over here has Lamprologus ocellatus gold, another trio in there that vigorously defend their fry from me and the brevis that they can see in the next aquarium. So if I was to put some bristlenose catfish in there, even though they are quite armored and protected by their scales, their fins would get ripped to shreds by these cichlids. So I'm not gonna do that just yet. Once those uh, bristlenose catfish are large enough, say maybe seven or eight centimeters, I'll feel more comfortable putting them in that aquarium and they'd you know, be able to defend themselves a little bit better from these parents. So that is why I use devices like this to clean algae off the glass of these aquariums. So guys, it's the next morning and hopefully you can tell on camera that the aquariums look a lot cleaner than they did yesterday. The whole process to clean all the algae off the glass took about 30 to 40 minutes to complete. 
So that's done. And now I'm rewarded with crystal clear views on my fish finally. Uh, I've got a couple of things to do today. Firstly, I've got to catch some fish for a customer that's arriving soon. I like to catch and bag the fish before the customer gets here so they don't have to wait for me to catch the fish for them. The next thing I need to do is uh, get a clutch of eggs out of my long fin bristle nose tank. They've kicked out another clutch, unfortunately, so I'm gonna have to raise them myself in the breeder box. I'm not sure if you can pick it up on camera, but the breeder box that's operating kind of makes a gurgling sound every second or so, quite repetitive. I was hoping to turn that one off that I've got running. Uh, the, sick, the catfish that I've got in this breeder box here are ready to go into their tank. However, now I've got to switch the breeder box over to the long fin bristle nose tank, so I'm gonna have it running for another about, about a week or two weeks longer. And then the last thing I'm gonna to do today is a water change on all these tanks, and I'm gonna show you the process that I go through to get that done. Anyway, let's get to it, and I'll start catching some fish for this customer. I've caught some Lamprologus ocellatus gold. There's six in this bag. And I'm just gonna show you some little tips that you can use to uh, help you catch fish and bag fish a little easier. So this container here, you can uh, get them when you buy, uh, say, pears or apples from Woolworths or Coles. They come in a pack, and I save them for helping me sit the bag nice and comfortably open uh, for me without it rolling over. Makes bagging fish a whole lot easier. Uh, and yeah, like I said, the bag will not tip over. It also helps you pour water in the bag. Now with this, uh, with this size bag, I know I could fit just under a litre perfectly in this bag for these fish. So another thing I'd suggest you buy is something like this, a little handheld small container to pour water into the bag. Again, making bagging fish a whole lot easier. So the next thing I'm gonna do is get some elastic bands. Now these elastic bands aren't ideal for bagging fish, they're quite small, but they were the best I could find. The first thing I do is I put it on my hand like this. I had to roll up the bag to get the fish in the bag a little bit easier. Okay, now that the bag is unrolled, I'm just gonna go like that and tighten the bag up as tight as I can. Now spinning the bag around like this isn't harming the fish. They stay in the same spot. The water does not spin with the bag. So they stay in the same spot. Next thing, once the bag is nice and tight, you can pop the elastic band off your hand like that. And this isn't the way I like to bag fish. I like to bag the elastic band curving underneath the bag. However, with these, because they're smaller, all I'm doing is tightening. You can see I'm tightening the elastic band and then putting it over the top of the bag. You really want to keep it as tight as possible, not loose, because then the air will stay in the bag, obviously. Now once you've got it a bit around the, the top of the bag, I do this, I just twist the top of the bag, bend it down over like that, and then again, really tight around the top. And this will help keep air in the bag. Now my customer isn't far from me, so this bag is fine like this. I normally put prime in the bag with the fish, but because the customer's like 20 minutes drive away from me, it's not that, that's not too bad to just leave them like that. I normally add like a, a drop or two of prime. So there you go, there's six gold ockies in there. Next bag is to catch some brevis. So I'm just gonna pop this on the table uh, in one of these so they don't roll over. So you can see it just sits upright like that. Nice little tip for you guys. Hopefully that helps you out with um, bagging fish. So I'm just gonna do the other one now. So guys, as you can see, we've got both bags comfortably sitting in these containers. Now I'm gonna put them into the tanks and just float them in the tanks. Just gonna float the bags in the tanks. You can see the benefit of having these little containers making your life a little bit easier to bag fish. So I'm just gonna put these bags in the, in the tanks now and just float them in there until the customer comes so we can take them home. And here's the fish guys. So that's the brevis, six in there. Nice mix of males and females. Now I'm just gonna float them in the tank. Like so. So fine there. And these are six Lamprologus ocellatus gold. So some males and females in this bag as well. Just float them in there like that. And they'll be fine like that for quite a while. 
Now, I'm really sorry guys, but I'm gonna to have to break this video up now because the video is getting quite long. I know cleaning algae off aquariums isn't the most exciting topic, as well as maintaining plumbing, but that is what it's like to run a fish room. And I wanted to share as much detail with you guys so you can see what it's like to run something like this. So the videos are gonna come out over the next few weeks with more tips and tricks for you guys to use. Now, I really hope you found this video informative. If you did, please hit the like, comment, and subscribe buttons, as well as share the video if you can. All right, guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up now. Thanks heaps for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.